My name is Messia Bufu and it's time for us to go through the papers this morning. We call it Off the Press. Chris Kende Wandu joins us this morning. Executive Director, African Governance and Leadership Initiative. Thank you so much for being part of the show. Thank you very much. Merry Christmas to you and every other person watching us from across the globe. All right, and Merry Christmas to you as well. Uh, let's start off with the Nation newspaper this morning. The Nation says, disquiet in PDP over week is Mackinday's orders trip to the United Kingdom. That's a bold caption. G5 governors on retreat to decide on preferred presidential candidate. Chris, I don't know what you make of this, but I'm just waiting to share your thoughts how these governors who belong to a political party have been acting contrary, you know, to uh, party activities. Another says, on remitted 200 million naira checked off, dues divide pensioners. Money is very powerful. And, you know, money can cause any trouble, so I can be surprised. Food prices shot up by 29.00% within 12 months. And just before we move away from the nation this morning, investors take $3 trillion on Nigerians' equity. Outrage trails killing of expectant lawyer by policeman at a checkpoint. Bolanle Rahim, very, very, very unfortunate. I'm not sure you want to imagine, uh, you know, the situation. Now, and we have the punch in front of us. CBN monitors 6,047 BVNs over suspected fraudulent transactions. But we, we, we thought that, you know, with the BVNs, all of this fraud would have been uh, faster. Well, probably wouldn't even be um, necessary or apt for them to engage in this act. Central Bank examines 28 banks, bank customers' operations. Uh, 17.89 million bank accounts not linked with BVN. 144 properties forfeited by fraud stars, looters for auction. And just before we move away from the punch, domestic airfares saw by 97%. That's according to the MBS. IMF wants Nigeria over dwindling oil revenue. I thought we were getting it right just a month back. PCC kicks over governor's threat to dump a tiku. Okay. And again, you find student false fee hike in varsities demand review. Policeman kills graduate. A doe family begs IG. Oh, no. This is, this is really, really sad. 124 billion weapons imported in four years. This is according to a report on uh, the Punch newspaper this morning. And how Lagos policeman killed my pregnant wife, lawyer's husband, is quoted to say. Very unarmed, uh, you know, citizen. And we have the leadership now. The leadership says, 2023 presidency, Tunubu, Obi's men shipped battleground to south, south, and southeast. That's a bold caption on the leadership. Governors are supporting Labour Party standard bearer, says Ohanese. Jonathan supporters mobilized for APC presidential candidate. Deal decisively with terrorists, army chief charges troops. Mm hmm Three died in Niger, in Niger Republic, Mili three helicopter crash. Three died in Niger Republic, Mili three and helicopter crash. One killed, 45 abducted by gunmen in Kaduna. Bala Mohammed alleges plot to rig Bauchi governorship elections. And federal government grants local ship owners zero import duty on new vessels. Another headline says, Killing of Lagos Lawyer, Hatiku Six Urgent Police Reforms. I mean, it's just a time where anyone can jump really at it. You ask yourself, the difference fair? How, how far have we contributed, you know, to the issue of police brutality and calling for the reforms? 
Islamic group to appeal death sentence. Uh, these are some of the headlines we find this morning on the leadership newspaper, but that's so much we can take now. Chris Kende, uh, once again, thank you for joining us. Let's quickly share your thoughts on this, uh, on some of the burning issues now. Well, uh, once again, um, Merry Christmas to our viewers across the globe. And um, it's just, um, I have to start with the killing and shooting of um, the Mobile Rahim in Lagos by a trigger happy uh, policeman on Christmas Day. Uh, this is a killing too many. Uh, Messy uh, information coming in is that Bolanle uh, is pregnant, is seven months pregnant. So that is double homicide. He did not only he did not only kill the woman, but he also killed the baby inside her stomach. And uh, that comes to question the kind of people that are within our police force, our recruitment drive, how they are recruited, and the kind of training that they are given. And um, more more worrisome to me is the fact that uh, the Ajiwe police station in Niger has become so notorious for this kind of act. Uh, from what we are seeing, this is the second killing and shooting within the past one month. And uh, that brings to question the kind of mentality uh, of the people that are there. It's not only the policemen that, uh, for me, that are killed that should be arrested. Even the DP of that police station should be questioned. It's obvious that he doesn't know his job. The men under him, I don't know what they are supposed to do. For you to just raise your pistol and shoot at a very good convenient children and family shows the mentality of the, uh, of the uh, some of our men in uniform. And that is what we are at the same time with that number. These are people that have been paid with our tax money to be able to sustain, to be able to protect us. But, but rather than doing the need, they are turning those uh, weapons against uh, uh, against Nigerians. But the problem is not in the arrest and the prosecution of that policeman. My problem is that even whatever is done to that policeman, we need to bring back a mobile Rahim and the unborn child. Nothing can bring back the, those two lives again. And that is what we have been saying, time with our number. The Nigerian security agencies at times just look at themselves as being superior to the ordinary civilians, the fact that you have a pistol with you or a gun with you makes you feel like um, you are more superior than your fellow Nigerians. Yes, this kind of thing happens in some part of the world as well. Of course, we've been seeing shooting in the United States of America and some other parts of the world. But the justice system in those countries makes sure that um, those um, courts behaving in, such, uh, behaving in such manner are brought to book and severely dealt with. Mercy that there's so many policemen that have killed Nigerians and then um, nothing was done. After you'll be shocked that after this one again, for the next two, three weeks, we'll forget about it and move on as if nothing happened. And um, you'll be hearing about the prosecution taken to court. And um, even if he's sentenced, nothing, you say that, oh, he has been sentenced to life prison and rest of them. You know how it works. In. But my heart goes out to the family of that uh, young woman. On, 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 on this, uh, I don't even know how to put it this morning. It's just quite unfortunate. Uh, well, it's quite unfortunate, um, Kende Wandu. Let's quickly move away from that. Uh, we, we say that this should not just be just one case because if we want to continue in this conversation, you remember vividly what led to the hashtag NSAS protest. And of course, in generality, it's ending police brutality and calling for the reforms. And I'm, I'm just really worried that in 2022, we're still here shortly after the, you know, the memorial and it's going on. And, in, and, and uh, it feels like um, impunity will continue, rascality and what have you, all of this uh, trigger happy officers will continue to exist in our system because we have not been very honest with our actions as you know, people, especially when I say people, I'm talking about, you know, the government at this point in time. But that will be the crux of our conversation uh, mm -hmm. as we as we proceed. Uh, Kende Wando, I'm sure you, you want to say something. Yes, I was also about to tell you that uh, Messi is not just Lagos, 
if you look at the lower part of that um, front page of um, of the punch, you also see that the policeman killed a young graduate, a shot a young graduate in a do state. The family is crying out over the killing of that young man who was at a party the next to me that the policeman just released shots and uh, that young man is about 28 years and this is just a young man that is just um, um, he's going on, just left the university and tried to hide in a living and at the party this man just released a shot that killed him instantly and they've been trying to cover that now the family is calling on the inspector general for police to do something about it that that brings to question what i've been talking about the kind of mentality our security agencies are especially within the police force this is very very rampant with the police not other security agencies police is so so is into this and um, the earlier we talk about we something about it, the better. I think Obaka is talking about the reforms of the police. Uh, of the police, I don't know where we're going to start from. But for us to be able to do it, it has some um, social, economic, and religious. Uh, because most of that you have come to realize that most of like 80 and 90 percent of uh, people in the police that we recruit every year are not people that really want to join the police because they want to uh, secure Nigeria. But because they don't have other jobs to do, so you see lots of kinds of reference, um, uh, uh, people of questionable characters um, joining to police. On to make the police very attractive in Nigeria, then we continue to have this kind of uh, people um, at the within our security agencies. Mm. Chris, let, let's look at um, the nation. There's quiet in the PDP over weekends, marking days, others trip to the United Kingdom. And uh, according to the report, the G5 governors are on a retreat to decide on a preferred presidential candidate. What are your thoughts on this preferred presidential candidate? Should there not be supporting, I'm talking about the G5 governors now, uh, a presidential candidate of their party? Are they? I don't still five. I thought uh, th I thought uh, Tom already does the P2. We read in the papers, so we are not talking about four. So uh, maybe we should remove Tom because it's Tom as the main president. Well, you know it's the nation. You know, you know it's the yeah, nation, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, politicians are very dense. Uh, uh, sometimes during the week, because I I read also that. The G5 are divided in themselves. Some want to support um, P2B, some want, want to support, um, uh, what's his name, um, 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 Tinubu. And we came, came out himself to say, Me, as a person, in January, I will name who I'm going to support. So I don't think we should bother ourselves uh, or who they are supporting or who they're not. It's their prerogative. Anybody they want to support, they have the right to support anything. I just believe that and hope that the various political parties will just look beyond these uh, governors and concentrate on their and uh, on their campaign while negotiation is on. Um, but one thing is politics is is that I can tell you that I'm supporting you. Feels to be just telling you I'm supporting you. But when we go in the night, when I'm looking my support, I'll say, don't mind him, food for the other person. That is our politician. So don't trust these politicians and the kind of uh, rhetoric and things they say. They are never to be trusted, and that is the issue. But, but Chris, uh, this conversation is is premised on the argument that, you know, at the party level, we lack uh, internal democracy. That's what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're yeah. also talking about acting in accordance with the rule of engagement. I mean, you were saying abide by the laws. And so I'm sure that at the various party, you know, political parties that we have, they have, you know, a constitution, a, a rule book that guides their action. My question is, is, does this not contravene the actions? I mean, does this not contravene the rule book or the constitution of the parties? And is this also not, you know, an anti-democratic tenet by these governors? Should we be embracing it? Because you, you have said that they have a right to support whoever they should support. But these are, you know, persons, they're not just ordinary, they're governors. And they belong to a certain political party. Does it really make sense that in a democratic system, that they're, they're, they're saying, hey, we're going to come out with who we're supporting or we're already supporting X, Y, Z. Should they not support members of their political parties? That is what, that you are totally right, Messi. I'll tell you that party, party democracy and supremacy died in between 1979 and 1983. Messi, I know you are very young. 
you may not have. Uh, oh, really? Somebody. Try me. <laughs> I, I'm not, I don't talk anything. I don't talk anything. No. <laughs> but uh, seriously, uh, uh, if you remember, uh, you must have read the history, a student of history, that in 79, 83, we have political parties like MPN, MPP, GMPP, PROP, and UPN. Those days of Awolowo, Nam Dazikiwe, uh, the days of Aminu Kano, the days of Waziri Ibrahim, and uh, those are the major Asher Shagari, uh, who was the presidential candidate of the uh, MPN then. We realized that the party was so supreme that whatever the party says is the line that the governors will tell. But what we have now, since 1979, the governors are now more powerful than the parties. And that is where they got it wrong. So the one is that the, the governors run the parties. So whatever they say is what happens. The establishment will become the chairman of the party and other national officers. With that, they can also determine what happens uh, in terms of ideology and policy. Why a party, let's take for example, why a party has not been able to uh, deal with issues of anti-party activities of certain governors within their party is what I don't understand. If, in as much as genuinely some of these governors have uh, a genuine reason to agitate, but once we have been to the political party, irrespective of whatever, whatever that political party says is what they should do. So, a situation where governors, five governors of uh, PDP will be going around and uh, um, going against um, the tenants of um, the, 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 the uh, the manifesto and the constitution of their um, uh, of their party uh, it comes um, comes with um, it, it questions. It comes with certain uh, underlining effects. But the question you also asks you that the leaders of the party have they also they, they you remember what the uh, the, uh, the the hawk said. He says since um, the hunter has learned how to shoot without missing, missing and it has started learning how to fly without perching. So on both sides, both of them are violating, both the uh, party members and the party leadership are violating the ethics of their own, um, uh, of their manifesto and their constitution. And that a constitution, I mean, and that in itself is manifesting in how these people are behaved. Um, until we still go back to the drawing board and make the parties very superior and have all the kind of necessary powers to be able to operate, then this is the kind of thing you can be able to do. We are somebody who will be in and say that, I'm going to endorse somebody in the Labour Party, I'm going to endorse somebody in um, uh, APC or any other party. That is just anti-party that's supposed to be sanctioned. But it seems they don't have the way with that. After all, you who pays the paper to take this tune. Most of the governors are the ones that put them down. There's not, practically nothing they can do about it. Well, um, I'd like to share your thoughts on this other one, uh, the CBN and her monitoring activity uh, it's said that on the punch the cbn monitors 6047 bvns over suspected fraudulent transactions we thought that you know with everyone <laughs> having the bvn it would just be uh au revoir to yeah it's, it's, fraud yeah, to me it's very, it's very it's very surprising that um, we have close to 80 million accounts bank accounts not linked to bvn and that in itself is very some for me. And if it is as an account that with that BVN, automatically that account will be forfeited to the banks and then um, by CBN directive. So what you are saying that money in those accounts, the question you have to ask, are those accounts still being uh, uh, going through transactions? Are they being used for transaction? Um, uh, Messi, just uh, before the Christmas, I know that I was having the uh, my one of my bank was giving me issue of my BB and despite the fact that I have linked this for several <laughs> years and that account was put on hold that I was asked to do some certain things, necessary things, uh, it's a corporate account uh, for me to get it and uh, I'm trying to do that again. So, um, and you can be rest assured that most of this account not linked to BBN are the ones being used for fraudulent activities. There are some of them being used by kidnappers, bandits and the rest of them to be able to extort money from people, transfer money from people and the rest of them. Also, some of them are also being used by this so-called Yahoo Yahoo boys to fleece um, unsuspecting Nigerians and foreigners of their money and the rest of So if there's if there's a policy that all accounts must be linked to BVN, and you don't have you have close to about 18 
million of those accounts not linked, then I think the CBN should order the banks to freeze those accounts because the essence of BBN is to be able to monitor uh, monetary transactions so that we don't have people um, using them for fraudulent activities. But even at that, you now ask yourself, even with the BVN, are we, not, are we not seeing high level of corruption all over? This is a read about the AGF who stole over close to, was it about over 100 billion uh, naira? How did they do it? Was it in cash? It wasn't in cash. Definitely must have passed through a system and into some account. So uh, there are loopholes loop loop here and there. And that is why we said some of the policies of the Central Bank of Nigeria, which the uh, Central Bank of Nigeria is introducing, fair enough, is good enough, but it's just the way he's going about it that to me it seems not to be appropriate. You have to give people an opportunity to be able to, uh, enough time to be able to do. Don't forget, um, um, we just have about how many days to 31st of December, uh, the cutoff date, I believe, for uh, payment um, of good Naira notes. And we also have till about 15th or so of January for all old notes to um, to go out of circulation. But as of this morning, uh, I see that most Nigerians can have that new note. You know, I will show you. Have you seen the new note? <laughs> no, I showed you mine last week. You forgot that I showed you one last week. Uh, yes, I, that was the one I could pick. Just one. One thousand Naira new notes. You, you yeah. are very lucky, you know, because I'm beginning to question my... Uh, nationality, whether I'm still a Nigerian, I have <laughs> fought. <laughs> I have struggled <laughs> to you see. Know, you know, I have it. You see it. You see it. You see it. So, but, but what's the, uh, I mean, Chris, you remember vividly that it was also reported that we would have this money, the banks would actually load this money in the ATM. And not everyone has the luxury of walking into the banking hall. That's why we have, you know, the ATMs and, you know, other means of transaction without necessarily walking into the banking hall. So, yes, we're still saying one and the same. It feels like it has to be on a special request from my interaction with, you yeah. know, a couple of persons. You have to request that you want a new note. And who, who has, you know, the time to do all of that? But in the course of, you know, transaction, uh, I haven't even come across it. And I'm asking... What is this, you know, currency that we're talking about that seemed to be very secretive? It's like, you know, the circulation of it is uh, a hidden thing. You have to be anointed <laughs> to see it. I, I, I haven't the seen it. I, I haven't. The new narratives is even more scant than last. Don't ask me, I don't forget. It's even more scant than I'm telling you. Uh, you can't see it anywhere. I've, I've only seen the 1,000 Naira but the one I showed you last week. I've not seen the 500. I've not seen the 200. And it, don't forget that the policy of the Central Bank is that the 200 Naira notes should be loaded into the ATM. You go to the ATM, you cannot get any of those money. And I've continued to ask you, why are you dispensing? You are giving a time frame for withdrawal of all Naira notes. You are still dispensing the old one to Nigerians. So how would that, do that? How would that happen? Okay, so I'm being told that uh, they would make sure my office, I mean, director is saying that I would definitely see the note today. All thanks to them and thanks to him as well. Because <laughs> <laughs> I need to see the original so I know when to identify when it's fake, right? That's the issue. Exactly. Uh, Thank you, director. Thank you, director. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so still looking at the Punch newspaper, that's also another the one that's of a major concern. Because once upon a time, I remember... If you have to board a commercial, I mean, a local flight in Nigeria, there was a time we were paying like 19,000 or, you know, 15,000, if I'm not mistaken, right? Uh, but um, the, no. we seem to be having a surge in domestic affairs. Uh, we're looking at 97%, and that's because the average cost of air ticket, airplane tickets now uh, rose from 37,000 naira uh, to... 73,000 naira. I mean, you have the fractions right there, but let's leave it approximately at 37 and 73,000. What exactly is responsible? Is it the aviation? Is it the period? Is it the, you know, demand and supply? What is responsible for this, you know, drastic hike in airplane tickets? First, number one is the jet A1. Um, the, uh, the fuel um, used by air, um, um, aeroplane and um, it gets it out of hand. It's just as you have a scarcity of fuel. Jet A1 is not available. 
and where it is is very very expensive. The last I heard was that it's over um, one thousand naira uh, per liter. Uh, in the past, it used to be around two hundred, um, three hundred, about right between two hundred and three hundred pegs. Over the month, it has jumped off the roof, and we don't seem to have enough in the country. Don't forget that we import practically everything that has to do with the energy sector, the petroleum sector, um, of Nigeria uh, uh, from abroad. The last time I had, I read this, and um, as a journalist, I heard that we have about nine ships with petroleum uh, products still uh, waiting to bite at various ports in Nigeria, and they're waiting for clearance from the customs. That is part of the reason why we have um, the scarcity we're having now. I don't think those, um, um, those vessels have been cleared uh, to offload what they have. Then that also goes with the Jet A1. At the point, don't forget that the airlines met with National Assembly and we are given a, a reprieve um, for some weeks, about some weeks anyway, on this issue of jet or bet. It has not solved the problem and that is skyrocketing. Coupled with that is the fact that within the festive period and a lot of people are flying across, um, going to their various um, towns and villages. Um, the road is not safe and uh, the best way to fly is um, through the airline. And mercy, I can tell you that a lot of people rather pay 150,000 naira to get a flight ticket to their state rather than be on the road and be kidnapped and be asked to pay 20 million naira. When you do the mass between 20 million and 150,000, you can see that it does business sense, it does not make any sense. So that is why you're having this serious surge. Uh, in, but the problem for me is that even when you, where you get a ticket, flying becomes an issue now. Because there are instances where flights are delayed for eight, nine, ten, up to twelve hours. You just be at the airport and you can't fly. Why? Because the airplane, the planes are not available and it's giving you delays, 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 and that just. But added to that also now is that you create. I don't know whether any you know, of the um, the newspaper had it. Uh, the one that we reviewed. The NCAA has just issued uh, a directive that. Um, the uh, the weather is so bad at this period and has warned airlines to be very careful in flying. That means that there are going to be cancellation of flights. We're even lucky here, Messi, if you see what is going around the globe, especially in the United States, Europe, and the rest of them. Because of the snow, over 80% of flights are being cancelled. Flights that are not even flying, most um, aeroplanes are, are not flying. And that one is understandable. But ours is man-made especially because of the fact that the aviation industry is finding it difficult to be able to pay over their running costs, then they have no option than to increase the uh, uh, fares. If you don't do that, the, what we're going to have is having a shortcut. They're trying to have a shortcut. And we'll be that back to the days of AD, ADC, EAS, uh, Bellevue Airline crashing. And God forbid that we go back to that route again. Well, we have to leave the conversation at that, and we hope that uh, we have some other time to continue uh, where we have actually uh, ended it today. Thank you so much, Chris Kendi. Wonderful for being part of the show this morning. Yes, and tell your director that I must make that money available to you, or, or I look for it and bring it to you personally. Have a wonderful day ahead. <laughs> Many thanks, Chris. Uh, we appreciate you. And that's it. Chris Kende Wando is an nice yes, you too. Chris Kende Wando is an executive director of African Governance and Leadership Initiative. Uh, he's been part of uh, off the press this morning. We hope to have him next week. All things being equal, and that's the size of it. We take a break. When we return, it will be time for us to delve into our first major conversation. We'll look at the issue of police brutality that has continued in our country, Nigeria. Please stay with us.